What's up, prisoners? <laughs> like that, I'm going to call you guys that from now on? Because I don't. <laughs> if you don't like it, then too bad. I gotta give myself something unique. Not that I came up with the idea anyway. People in my comment section did, but I appreciate it. But you know, it's something. Anyway, Butch Hartman, everyone knows him. He's the self-proclaimed creator of your childhood. He's created plenty of shows that were big hits back in the day, from Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom. He also created two other shows, but no one really cared about them because they were bad, so no one cares. And he also ignores them anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Now you might be like, why talk about Butch? He's a nice old man who created classic cartoons that people grew up with. What could he have done to deserve criticism? A lot, actually. Like an astronomical amount. There was the time he promised people they would be making his own child-friendly streaming network or axis. Which the trailer is just great. I would give it a watch someday. It's just so pandering. He even had a Kickstarter and reached the goal of like a quarter of a million dollars. He would then go on to take the money and never talk about it again. And like silence people that were trying to bring up the fact that, hey, you took a lot of people's money and never really did anything with it. There's also the time that, he, you know, he talked down to people criticizing him about this stuff. By saying that since they don't make cartoons, they can't criticize them. I'll play the clip here. There's always someone that's going to like uh, try and bring you down because they've never done anything on their own. And so uh, if uh, someone wants to do something and then and they want to ask me questions like that, that's one thing. But if someone doesn't do anything and they want to like, you know, I don't know, criticize, then uh, I have no time for them. No time for them. That's how you handle criticism, by talking down to people with genuine problems. There's the time you talked down to introverts and called them selfish and self-centered people. That was really well met. There's also the time he talked down on modern depression and he talked about how it's all because of like phones and technology. You know, like the old boomer stuff. And my personal favorite one, claiming that him and his phony religious organization Healing Journeys can cure things like autism and disease. Now I want to say real quick, I'm tired of people treating autism as something you can cure like it's a disease. Like, I'm just sick of it. It just gets so annoying. Treating autism on the same level as something like the flu or something that can kill you is just wrong. And it's just terrible because you see all these anti-vaxxers not vaccinate their children just because one study once said that it could cause autism. So they'd rather get their children killed by some terrible disease and risk them having autism, a risk that isn't there. And he's perpetuating this. Before all this came out, he left Nickelodeon to focus on YouTube. Well, you might be like, well, maybe he's a terrible person but at least the content he makes must be really good to make up for it. He sells commissions now so they must be really high quality art. It must also be reasonably priced too because Butch Hartman is in no way self-centered and thinks that his art is amazing. No, just no. Commissions for basic drawings can run you up to $200. $200 to get a drawing from the self-proclaimed creator of your childhood. Now you might be like, since they're expensive, they must be great. So immaculate that they're worth every penny. Now, I mean, does this look worth it to you? It's not inherently bad, but it's not worth a quarter of what he's asking for. He also treats all the art he makes as like a gift from God. If you look at the Kickstarter he made, one of the donation goals was him drawing something for you. And it says, and I quote, It's not every day you get your own Butch Hartman original, so snatch the chance while you can. Worst part about this is, is that this is from a $500 pledge. Also, another fun fact about his art, he traces. He traces a lot. So not only are you overpaying for your art that you could get way better for way cheaper from something like Viver, it's not even a real Butch Hartman exclusive because it's just him tracing it because he doesn't care. In fact, while I was scripting this, I found this guy named Sanjam SN40 who redrew the actual commissions Butch did, even the traced ones, and managed not to only do them better, but actually do them in the Butch Hartman in style. So go support him. Tell him I said goodbye, I guess. I'll leave a link to him in the description. Now, obviously, when you get exposed for scamming people out of their money, talking down on serious issues like mental health, and pretending to cure illnesses, and saying autism's a disease that you can just cure like that, and being all around pretty terrible person for apparently being the creator of your childhood, Love Forum quickly got lost, with him now bleeding like a thousand subscribers every few days for months now. He doesn't get nearly as many views as he used to, not even like a year ago. I didn't know what his peak was when I first started this. I made a post about it on the YouTube message board, I think it's called, and Wacky Wonka showed me how to get this, so thanks. His peak was around 851,000, less than 1,500,000 to go to get to the YouTube gold button, but he's not going to get it now since obviously he's bleeding it. Now he's at 839,000 and he shows no 
real sign of slowing down when it comes to bleeding subscribers. Now Butch used to have a pretty lucrative YouTube channel. I mean not everything was a hit, but he started YouTube way before most celebrities did. Most celebrities nowadays like The Rock or Jack Black joined years later. Each started it in 2015. He even had the advantage of being unique when it came to content, with him talking about his experiences with working with big animation companies and the like. You don't really get that with a lot of celebrities, you get like a bunch of actors, but you don't really see any animation people. It's a shame that his content has devolved into pandering crap in a desperate attempt to get your relevance back, when all it's doing is showing how desperate he is for people to start caring about him again. Now I'm not going to go into real depth about the horrible things he's done, which is a lot. I just wanted to go over it in case you didn't know. There's plenty of videos out there talking about all this, so go check them out. It won't be hard to find videos talking about the terrible things Butch has done. I recommend you check out The Right Opinion and Jay Arbery. They make good videos about him. I want to look at his channel and show how desperate and terrible it is and how he just he's view hungry. It used to be actually interesting with him talking about behind the scenes stuff like about his cartoons, even do like when his characters got older and all that. But nowadays it just seems so desperate. What I find ironic is that two years ago he made a video about Jake Paul and calling him out about the clickbait he does because he was relevant at the time. Saying how he's clickbaiting and trying to look cool like I does by calling it like clickbait cop doesn't really work out when you only use that name once for a video and it doesn't really help that you're using the same clickbait you called him out for now. Even as collabs with other people. Now there's nothing wrong with collabing to me. As long as the people collabing makes sense at the very well gel off each other well enough. He did a couple of videos with MatPat, the guy behind Game Theory. But nowadays it just seems like he's doing it with anyone that will listen to him because no one big really wants to work with him. I mean the Odd Ones Out did one a couple months ago but he's child friendly and he's an animator so that makes sense. But the people who do collabs with them like Nogla or Wildcat don't really make sense to me. They're not really child friendly I would say. I mean they're not something I would say your kid can't watch, but it just seems really weird when Butch's audience is mostly just children that don't know enough about this man to know they shouldn't support him. The main person I saw that made me think about these collabs, and hell, the main reason I made this video, was this collab with Milk and Cookies Total War. He's a Warhammer YouTuber, and the video was talking about like Warhammer as a whole. Now, if you don't know anything about Warhammer, you should know it's not very child friendly. The main tagline of the franchise is the in the grim darkness of the far future there's only war. So I have no idea why he would collab with him to talk about this franchise that is not kid friendly in any way. Especially since, you know, if you're looking at the background footage, it should tell you this isn't, you know, like a you should sit your kids down to play with them thing. It's not even that Cookies is like a raunchy guy or anything or if his videos are excessively like violent. It's just that the franchise itself is just about brutally murdering people. I also don't know why Cookies would collab with Butch. Butch Hartman is a sinking ship and has been for months so I don't know why he would collab with him. It's not even like Butch is big anymore so it's not like he's getting relevance and even if he was, Butch's audience and like the Warhammer audience don't mix at all. I mean I guess I'm making a video about Butch but that's because he deserves to be criticized for this garbage he's peddling. I go on about this just to show you guys how desperate Butch is to be relevant again. And it's obvious that he's only doing this stuff to be relevant. He talks about a lot of anime nowadays because it's popular with my, like My Hero Academia or One Punch Man. He reacts to like League of Legends stuff. He even makes Dang and Rampa videos. That game about high schoolers killing each other is apparently one of his favorite games. So it's clear that it's just for views. And honestly, I like Dang and Rampa, but I don't know why he would make videos about these games. There hasn't been a new one in a while, and I don't think they were ever really that popular. I still even have to finish the second one and the third one, but I just generally don't know what he thought he was gonna do for making these videos. He also, I want to bring this up because I don't really have a point to it. Well, I do have a point to it, but uh, he made a video about like his characters being in GTA 5, but it's not him playing the game with these characters modded in. It's him reacting to gameplay. I don't know why he did let himself just play the game with these characters in it. I'm going to assume he just didn't know how to mod it. So he just reacted to someone else's gameplay. It's just weird. Oof, and he's going and he parachutes down to a Hollywood street. Okay. All right. So Danny's in Hollywood now. All right. So Danny, Danny got himself a Jeep here. Also, most of his videos are just so drawn out and boring. Do you really need 30 minutes to talk about the Star Trek spinoff that's being animated? Or clickbaiting Danny Phantom again for the 50th time? Because he always clickbaits like Danny Phantom coming back in one way or another, even though Nickelodeon just doesn't want anything to do with him anymore. It's just so repetitive. That's all of his stuff is, it's just repetitive and too long. Before I get done with him, I want to mention his TikTok. Yes, he has one of those, and it's just as boring as his YouTube channel, except thankfully shorter. Where all he does is take his old cartoon clips and put the new TikTok trend over it. I'll show a few examples of it. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Dude, how do you feel?
it's just sad to see a guy who genuinely made a few good shows at the beginning of his career and seemed to be a decent person to turn into like a greedy attention seeking user because I haven't mentioned it yet but if you look on the Total War Cookies uh, video you see everyone talking about Kuro that's some artist he scammed. So go look him up. He probably deserves the support. If I can find a link, I'll show you it. He looks down on anyone that criticizes him and he refuses to talk about all the stuff he does because he thinks if he ignores it, it'll just go away, but it won't. All it does is make more and more people mad. What really made me mad about him and what really pushed me to make this video was his self-proclaimed creator of your childhood. He isn't. He might've made part of your childhood, but not all of it, especially since all of his cartoons were either bad from the get-go, like Bunsen is a Beast or Tough Puppy, but went downhill quick, like his other two shows. You want to know someone who really made your childhood? Steven Hillenburg. Spongebob is one of the most well-known characters out there. I thought you could find a kid really anywhere that has access to television that doesn't know who Spongebob is, whether it be the official kind or like a bootleg version. And unlike Butch when he departed from Nickelodeon, he did go immediately scamming fans out of their money or talk down to people about their work or like mental illness or anything. And although Spongebob's had its ups and downs, absolutely, it's still going on and it's still loved by people. Not a lot of people can say that about any of Butch's shows. The bad shows were cancelled almost immediately, and the good ones went on for so long that they just died as bad shows. It got so bad that, you know Fairly Odd Parents, you know one of the biggest cartoons out there, the second biggest cartoon for a while on Nickelodeon besides Spongebob? It didn't even get a season finale, no fanfare, no nothing, because people didn't care about it anymore, it's just a bad show. And Butch has ran his reputation into to the ground so much that people just don't care about what he does anymore. What I find funny about comparing the two is that Butch has made it clear that he's really bitter towards Spongebob's success, especially compared to his own shows. I'm like, what? They say, we're canceling your show again. I said, but well, why are you guys stopping it now? It's still not doing as well as the Sponge Show. The Sponge Show is our Mickey Mouse. Oh, hi, Pluto. Hi, Patrick. I'm Spongebob. And now uh, you're the Donald right. Duck of Nickelodeon. <laughs> They canceled for a third time. I knew in my heart that Fairly Odd Parents was never going to get canceled because I just knew it was such a great show. We had so many more stories to tell. When at the end of the day, nothing he made was good enough to last, let alone compared to what Steven made. Once again, Spongebob's had its ups and downs, and it certainly has its bad episodes. But Butch's career, it's just a bunch of dead shows that no one really cares about anymore. It's just a shattered legacy and a dying channel that won't recover because of all the scummy things he's done. A channel I don't think will ever recover, and the more and more desperate stuff he does for views, the more and more I think it will just sink in the fact of it. Whereas Steven even came back to Spongebob to help him prove it, and it made it as good as when I was a kid. And when Steven unfortunately passed, it was a national tragedy. People including me were genuinely sad about it and mourned about it. Like, and although I did cry, I felt really bad about it because like, the creator of my childhood, the creator of a lot of people's actual childhoods died. And although the NFL bombed when it celebrated him by putting on like Travis Scott, at least the NHL covered us for it, I guess, so that helps, I'll leave a link to it. But that's it for today's video. I just wanted to talk about Butch because honestly, I feel like he deserves to be put through the ringer more. He's done so many scummy things, even without the clickbait and just the terrible channel he runs. So if you want more information, I recommend you just check it out. It's incredible how fast you can ruin your multiple decade long career. Only a few short years. But yeah, that's it. Not a lot else to say except don't support him. If you enjoyed the content, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.